And welcome to ABC News Live election coverage. You are looking at a live picture now of the White House where the winner of tonight's election will spend the next four years. And voters are still deciding right now who that will be. We have already witnessed a historic voter turnout, and we expect even more ballots to be cast as Americans continue to head to the polls right now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips in Washington, D.C., and thank you so much for watching ABC New Live special coverage of Election Day in America. If you are just tuning in for the first time today, well, it's our first time being here, too. It's the inaugural ABC News Live Election Tuesday, so we are so glad that you are here streaming with us. So let's get you caught up to speed now on what you need to know. These six states could very well decide the outcome of the election. All eyes will be on Florida. Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Arizona, and Pennsylvania tonight. And if you still want to get out and vote, well, here's a look at when the polls will close across our country. The first round of polls close at 7 p.m. And a couple of other important reminders as well. If you're in line to vote, when your polling location closes, you do have the right to vote, so don't leave. Also, because of the record early vote numbers, the results that come in early tonight could shift dramatically over the course of the evening and days to come. But election officials across the country are committed to an accurate count. Lastly, in 22 states in Washington, D.C., you can still register to vote. So if you're at home watching us or at work streaming on your phone in the states that you see right on the screen there, you could head to the polls and register to vote and exercise your sacred right. Well, you know, there has been a lot of anxiety and concern over this election this year and how we're going to be able to vote during this pandemic. But even within all the fears and stress, millions of Americans are still getting to the polls today. So whether you're worried about long lines, mail-in ballots, voter IDs, or same-day registration, our Devin Dwyer has a few calming solutions for you. Devin joins us now from the Election Protection Hotline Center in Washington, D.C. So, Devin, with all the anxiety over this election process this year, can you just start us off with a bit of show and tell and explain exactly where you are and how and why this hotline was even set up? Hey, Kira, you know, you talk about soothing. Well, the people here at the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law are all about it. They've been in this business for a long time. This is the nation's largest and longest running nonpartisan voter help hotline. It's 1-866-OUR-VOTE. They have fielded hundreds of thousands of calls already this cycle. They've been doing it for decades. And here they are, you know, we've been here before. This is normally a pretty bustling scene. As you can see behind me, though, today, a much smaller crowd of volunteers. They have 42,000 lawyers uh, around the country that are helping this hotline. This is the nerve center behind us here. This is the staff that's keeping that running. They have 30 call centers uh, at, uh, at lawyers' offices across, across the country, fielding tens of thousands of calls. We're told right now, Kira, today the biggest number coming from Pennsylvania. And I was just given a briefing a short time ago, Kristen Clark, the executive director here, saying that so far things are running pretty smoothly, but the biggest concern right now from these lawyers and the folks helping voters out at the polls is coming out of the state of Georgia. This morning, a number of counties there had uh, ballot machines, uh, iPads, polling machines offline. They were not calibrated properly. And so there's a big concern there that a lot of voters were turned away. So they're looking into that. And they're also, as you've been reporting uh, on the channel, Kira, concerns about robocalls in a number of states telling people to stay home. Uh, and they're fielding calls here from voters telling them to disregard that message, Kira. You know what, Devin, I even received a number of those calls today uh, telling me to stay home, also saying that my identity had been stolen, uh, and I kept getting that call over and over again and had to keep blocking it. Is that what they're recommending you should do? I mean, obviously, you shouldn't take any call like that, but a lot of people are vulner vulnerable right now. Should they report it, ignore it, block it? What are they saying? 
Yeah, you know, the number one piece of advice, it's sort of like when we're fighting back against the threat of terrorism, it's if you see something, say something. And today, the volunteers here are ready to field your calls and look into your flag. So if you see something that's unusual at your polling place, maybe you feel intimidated, you see something not quite right, or if it's as simple as you show up and you're not on the list, you didn't get an absentee ballot, you're trying to figure out what to do next, uh, give these guys a call, one 866 vote and they'll help you navigate it, make sure you're taken care of, Kira. All right. We'll keep in touch with you and, and keep the word out. And definitely that phone number. Devin Dwyer, thank you so much. We now want to bring in uh, Republican strategist Alex Castellanos and Democratic strategist Amanda Renteria, both ABC News political contributors. Great to see you both. Happy Election Day, guys. <laughs> Happy Election Day. <laughs> Let's well, hope it's not the Election Day that lasts a month. Well, I don't know, Alex. <laughs> Word on the street is this may take a while, uh, which leads me to my first question. I mean, we're talking about more than 100 million Americans that have voted. I mean, that's more than two thirds of the total uh, from 2016. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. So, you know, I want to ask you both this. Amanda, I'll start with you. Why do you think that we have witnessed such a historic turnout this time around? And does it bode well for either candidate? I want you both to weigh in. But Amanda, please start us off. Sure. I think it bodes really well for Biden um, because their whole entire strategy was make a plan, vote early, get it out there. And so that's that's a couple of reasons why it's good for him. But I'll also say just looking at the data, the younger vote that has come in by vote by mail has been a really big deal. The second is when you think about previous elections in 2018, the momentum beforehand on Election Day really mattered. And once again, you're seeing vote by mail is giving you an indication uh, that planning, that infrastructure, structure that was put in place so that you would have several election days, not just the final day, has really seemed to pay off, I think, for the Biden campaign. Alex. Yep. Well, I think uh, we're going to see a record turnout of 150, 160 million voters. And if Donald Trump and Republicans are trying to suppress the vote, uh, they're doing a uniquely terrible job. Uh, who is this good for? I think it's actually good for both sides. Uh, the Democrats got in their vote early by mail. Uh, Republicans are showing up now that in-person voting is, is uh, open. In a lot of places, we are seeing a little bit of a depressed black vote. I mean, every category is increasing this year. But the rate of increase for black voters is not quite as high as some other groups. Uh, that's good for Donald Trump. But we're seeing an elevation of seniors voting. That's bad for Donald Trump. So uh, it's good for all of us. You know, America has pretty good elections. We have fair elections where where we try hard to count every vote. And uh, I think we're, we're going to see that again this time. There'll be conflict about it. But I think we're going to have a good election. Well, we have had a number of surprises, I think, within our elections. Uh, Amanda, and I want to ask you in, in particular, Hillary Clinton, you know, she was forecasted to win in 2016. Um, and part of that upset was the so-called hidden or invisible voters who went for Trump. Do you think we could see that today and in the final hours of, of Election Tuesday into tomorrow? Every election day matters, and so you could always see that. But here's the difference is the Biden campaign is coming into election day, in some of these cases, 10 points up, where Trump has to make up, has to win 62% of the vote on election day in places like Michigan. I, we didn't have that. And the idea that you've got to come from behind on election day, particularly during a pandemic, particularly when there are long lines, makes it a very risky strategy. And so it feels very different. And I think the Biden team comes in with all of that momentum and really already running up the score. But listen, election day matters. And so what people are doing right now is really going to make the difference on what we see in uh, this evening. Well, Alex, one thing we have seen are the crowds and the crowds that came to these Trump rallies and their enthusiasm, even during a pandemic. I mean, standing outside in 30 degree weather with high winds to cheer on the president. How much do you think that translates into success at the polls? 
I think it translates uh, quite a bit because people want a president who actually wants the job. And Donald Trump's doing five rallies a day at the age of 72. I mean, uh, I wish I had half the energy he has. So <laughs> if you're doing a job interview, you actually want to hire somebody who wants the job. But to the shy Trump voter factor, I think that's actually important um, because that voter is out there. Uh, last time around in swing states, Hillary Clinton was up 5% in the polls, and Trump ended up winning those states by two points. This time, Biden is, is you know, we have a one-point race in Pennsylvania. We have a, uh, a jump ball in North Carolina. Trump is tied or ahead in Florida. If you add three points for that shy Trump voter, then Donald Trump actually has a chance to win this thing. But but this is like the NCAA playoffs for Donald Trump. He's got to win every battleground state to move to the next game. He's got to win Florida to get to Georgia, to get to North Carolina, and finally to get to uh, Pennsylvania. So he's he's got to draw that inside straight again, and that's going to be very hard. Well, I know we'll be talking to you, too, again uh, this afternoon, so I've got many more questions for you. Great discussion again ahead. Alex Castellanos uh, and Amanda Renteria, thank you both so much. All right, moving on to help us understand the importance of those crucial Midwest states like Wisconsin, Ohio, and Michigan, as we just saw. We welcome 538 elections analyst Nathaniel Rakich. Nathaniel, good to see you. We've done a lot of deep dives, or you've done a lot of deep dives into some of the polling that's coming out uh, of the Midwest uh, right now. Hillary Clinton lost some of those crucial states in 2016, like Wisconsin and Michigan, but all recent polls have Biden pretty far ahead in this part of the country right now. What do you, what do you make of that? Does COVID-19 have anything to do with it also? Yeah, maybe. Um, so first and foremost, I think it's because Joe Biden is doing very well overall. He has almost a nine point lead nationally. And when you do that, you're going to be doing well um, pretty much in every state relative to Hillary Clinton, for example. Um, that said, it's certainly plausible that COVID-19 has been having especially strong enough effect in these states. So COVID-19 is not a strong issue for President Trump at all. Uh, nationally, according to our polling averages, only 40% of people approve of how he's handled the pandemic, whereas 57% disapprove. And right now, Wisconsin is arguably being hit the hardest of any state by COVID-19. So it makes sense that uh, perhaps it's hurting him there. Well, we saw trends in, in 2016 that had Hillary Clinton ahead of, of Donald Trump in the polls, but so many of them did not reflect the actual election results, as you know. How do we know we won't see something similar like this uh, this time around? Well, we don't. You know, look, polls aren't supposed to be exact predictors of the election. They come with margins of error, and it's completely normal for polls to be off by a few points. In the case of 2016, states like Wisconsin and Michigan were extremely close, and so the difference, the three-point difference, ended up being the difference between a Clinton win and a Trump win in those states. Uh, but it's important to note that a polling error can go in either direction. So, uh, for example, I believe that Biden is leading in Pennsylvania by an average of five points. So, you know, if you say that a polling error could happen in either direction by three points, Biden could be winning the state by two points, or he could be winning it by eight points, and it could be a bigger Biden landslide than we expect. Um, but, you know, people should be aware that the polls um, are generally accurate, but there's definitely some wiggle room. Well, and we saw the wiggle room happen last time around and did not expect uh, what we what we witnessed. I think anything is possible, Nathaniel, right? As we close in on the final day here, what do you think? Are people really voting for Joe Biden or are they simply voting against Donald Trump? Well, that's hard to say. I think it, it depends on the individual voter. Um, I think if you ask people um, about uh, kind of the reasons they're voting and their enthusiasm, I think there's a lot of antipathy toward President Trump among Democrats, and that might be driving some enthusiasm among Democrats who maybe didn't vote for Joe Biden in the primary, um, but they see him as obviously the best candidate with a chance to defeat Trump. So, Nathaniel, before we let you go, I've been trying to figure out the sluggers behind you there in the frame. Who's your favorite player? 
Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, John F. Kennedy long before he was president, um, along with uh, Ted Williams of the Red Sox um, and uh, Hank Greenberg, I believe, of the Tigers. Um, I'm not sure who that other Red Sox is, but, uh, but yeah, old photo from uh, the 40s. <laughs> Pretty cool. We'll be interested to see who will make a home run in the next uh, 24 hours or so. Nathaniel, uh, thank you so much. You can check out more from 538 and all of their analysis at 538.com. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.